G'day, it's been a while since I've made this sort of less formal, bit more casual YouTube video stuff. Uh, things have changed. Uh, the environment, as you can see, has changed. A little bit's changed on this car, and I guess that's what the topic of today's video is. You've probably seen the title, so we're going to talk about the Keisler drop spindles I've put into this thing. So yes, first of all, obviously the world's been a bit wacky for the last almost year or so now, it feels like, thanks to uh, Daddy Rona. So not a lot of racing's been going on. Um, I haven't done a lot on this car. It's done little more than sit in the garage. Obviously, it's moved to a new home, which is really nice. A lot more space here. The car can live in undercover properly now, which it's never had before. So that's kind of awesome. No more dust and debris and crap getting on the car and the spiders getting underneath it and things, which is really nice because, you know, the spiders around here are, you know, Australia and all that. Anyway, um, there have been a couple of videos that have come out recently on the channel you may have seen, um, but they're a bit more formal or, or just voiceover-y stuff. Finally, look at us, we're talking again, isn't that lovely? Anyway, the family's back together. Um, Things are a bit slower around at the moment. You probably saw my video on the Kraken manifold that I've gotten. That's still sitting on the bench behind the camera there. Haven't had a chance to put that in the car because I've been working on this Keisler, uh, Keisler rear uh, drop spindles. And now that that job is finished, I will be getting onto the Kraken next. But uh, let me show you these spindles and we'll talk about what they are and how they work and a bit about the installation process, which wasn't perfectly flawless, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll bring you the, bring the camera over, give you a close up, and we'll go over some of the details, because it's kind of interesting. So please excuse the uh, slightly compromised lighting. We are working in a wheel well here, so you know, not the best for trying to see stuff. It's dark and shadowy, but what I've got new on the car now is the Keisler drop spindles. Uh, a little bit hard to get a camera in on these, but fundamentally it replaces the entire upright that used to live in this area. Uh, they also make them for the front. I've only put the rears on on this car. Uh, I've also put in a new hub assembly with the longer studs. So effectively all of the new bits I've got in here, we've got the new Keisler drop spindle. These effectively lower the suspension geometry related to the wheel. It essentially pushes the wheel up on the hub, which drops the body of the car relative to the wheel position, if that makes sense. Uh, by about one, one and a half inches, something along those lines. Um, it retains the OEM sized bushing at the top, the same OEM sized bearing for and wheel hub assembly, uh, retains the uh, ABS and uses the same lower bolt. So effectively, it's a bolt-on system. Oh yeah, and obviously, obviously the uh, stock brake caliper bolts up too. So everything else is stock except for the upright, effectively. However, I've also gone and put a new hub, a new bearing, a uh, Timken bearing, and the MR2 or MRS hub, the upgraded hub, stronger with, I think they're IS300 uh, wheel studs, the ARP extended wheel studs. All of that stuff is, 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 I guess, all about trying to improve the strength and reliability of this hub setup because a stock rear hub, they're quite uh, commonly known to fail, pretty cat catastrophically potentially. You can effectively have the whole wheel come off. Not good stuff. This car works pretty hard, as you can imagine. I don't want to take those risks, so it was time to upgrade the hub. Uh, really, the installation isn't that difficult. If you've taken a drive shaft out before, which is you know kind of required to change the diff and things, um, then you've, you've undone most of the bolts that are necessary to do, to do this conversion. That said, the installation wasn't completely flawless. Uh, there are a few things around the, the Keisler setup that uh, I would say aren't perfect. Um, Firstly, and perhaps the most disappointing thing, was just the lack of documentation on some of the little things that you needed to know or we have to work out. So first of all, it does retain or it supports the OEM ABS sensor, which is fantastic. However, the kit comes with a bag of bolts that don't 
clearly label what they're for. Um, so there's a, two bolts here, obviously to hold the bracket in. However, I got a bag of eight bolts. So two for this side, two for the other. But what are the other four bolts for? Well, apparently there are different bolts for the different NA and NB model cars. There's no doco anywhere that mentions anything about the bolts or what they're for. So I was a little confused on which ones to use. Obviously I can work it out by the length of them. Um, but why not just write that down somewhere in the documentation? Um, secondly, the ABS wire or the line from the sensor here, which runs across here and then up into the body up, up here. On the OEM uh, upright, there's a mounting boss here with a thread and you can bolt it in place. On this Keisler setup, there's no nothing, nothing to account for that. So effectively, I've got this loose bracket. There's a big metal bracket that sort of the wire runs through. So you can't really take the wire out of the bracket. Uh, and there's nowhere to mount this to. There's nowhere to bolt this to like the stock one did. The only solution I came up with was to drill a hole into the top arm and then it's cable tied, zip tied in place. So I've had to do that myself. Again, there's no info on the, or no suggestions or any reference to this in the doco. So another thing they probably could add to their paperwork. Um, the Kaiser spindles come with the option of a, I think a spherical bearing in this upper setup here. Uh, I already have the Delrin kit from Sadfab uh, with the poly bush up here. So I just retain the stock poly bush. Thankfully that bore is effectively stock size, so you can run a stock bush. And you can see I've drilled and tapped and put in my Zerk fitting, which is, uh, which wasn't a problem drilling this, whatever this material is, I'm not sure if it's aluminium or steel or what. I think it might be like a, a, a zinc coated steel or something. Uh, the drilling wasn't a problem, it was pretty easy to do. Um, it, the, the Kaisler setup also includes a set of new bolts, which you just can see the head off here. A new bolts for your caliper bracket. Uh, they're slightly different length to the OEM ones. And I think that's about it for the Kaisler. The only other thing was they came fairly well wrapped, just kind of in bubble wrap and some plastic paper padding to kind of keep them protected. Obviously they shipped all the way from the US to me in Australia, so a fairly long way, but they turned up within a or a few days, less than a week I would think, so very quick delivery times, uh, USPS Express or USPS Priority or something. Um, the, they didn't come with any doco. The only doco Kaisler have is on their, a PDF on their website, so as long as you know how to use an internet, you're all good, but I don't know why you wouldn't just spend the five cents to print off that, um, that document and include it in the packaging. It would just make life easier for people who, when they're putting this stuff in the car, they're not fumbling around on a phone or a computer trying to read a PDF. You've got the paper in, you know, it's a lot easier for when you're doing mechanical stuff to have a piece of paper to read than uh, a digital device. Um, and obviously, as I mentioned, that documentation doesn't reference um, the ABS bracket, the bolts that, extra bolts that are included, or the sort of provision for supporting this ABS wire bracket. Um, the other thing that was also a bit of a pain is the OEM washers on the outside of these, as you can see, this one's not done up yet. The outside of these, uh, the, the suspension bolt on the two lower bushes, so this side, there's one, hopefully the camera is focusing like a good boy, and there's this one here as well. They are much smaller now than what they used to be because when you lower the position of the, or actually you, when you raise the wheel up in re relation to the hub, you effectively push this arm closer to the, the rim. So effectively the rim used to be down here, we lift the wheel up, the rim is now really close to the suspension arm. It was so close in fact, I couldn't put the wheel on because the OEM sized washers here, which were quite a bit larger, they would overhang the uh, bush by quite a few millimeters they would bind and hit up on the wheel. Um, and what I can do is take you to the other side of the car. There's obviously no wheel, wheel here, but there's a wheel on the other side. So if we go for a little Honda. So I've thrown a torch in behind the rim here to make life easier so we can actually see what we're trying to look at, what we're trying to talk about. And it is this, you can see here the washer there 
and how close it is to the rim. Very, very close. Um, that washer used to be much larger in diameter, larger than the uh, outside diameter of the suspension arm itself even, so I could not get these wheels on. Uh, and it was the same front and rear. So this is the front one and you can see how tight that clearance is. I'll bump the brightness up a bit, there we go, that might help. Um, so yeah, super, super tight clearances. It was nonsensical, really. So I didn't even realize it, bolted everything up, put those two big boy washers back on. It all looked fine. Go to put the wheel on and it doesn't want to sit flush, it's sort of sitting at, at an angle because it's binding on those two lower washers, which are very, very close. Um, I've effectively, effectively just ground them down to sort of sort of match the outside diameter of the bush itself and then given a bit of a taper which even that taper is necessary to avoid uh, rubbing on the rim. Different rims and things are going to have different in the diameters and different clearances. That was a bit of a surprise, um, not a problem, just made a big mess when I had to grind the outside diameter of those washers down. I didn't have anything in my sort of bucket of washers that would fit so I just took the ones that were on there and took had a, had a go at them with the grinder reduce the diameter down. It worked, uh, they're all on and uh, yeah, it's tight, it's very tight. I'll keep an eye on that. I think that's enough clearance because the only way that really that, that can touch the rim is if the rim and the suspension and the hub and everything flex and it, I mean, it's all metal, hopefully it doesn't flex, but if there is enough flex in there due to G-forces, you could potentially get a couple of millimeters maybe and that could touch, uh, yeah. I hope not. So one thing I did forget to mention is that the Kaiser's drop spindles are about one to one and a half inches lower, something along those lines, which also affects your ride height. So if you were to install these and make zero other changes, you'll find that once you lower the car back down, it's gonna be dumped in the rear by about an inch. Um, I think the one and a half inch drop at the hub means because of kind of suspension arm ratios and things, you need to raise your shock by an inch. Because of the way that the hub relative to the suspension it raises, I'm actually able to use the lower shock, shock body length adjuster to get myself that high height back. You don't need to wind the spring up to increase ride height again. So effectively winding the body of the shock out about a inch gets me back to sort of where I was in terms of ride height. That said, the car's probably going to need a proper alignment again now that this setup is installed. I do believe there is an, uh, an influence on camber, so um, I'll need to go and recheck my camber adjustments and things, and in doing that, I'll probably redo my uh, corner weights anyway, which mean, means I may adjust the right height slightly. But, yeah, that's, uh, that's the Kaisler drop spindles on the MX-5. I hope you enjoyed a bit of an overview slash review kind of thing just to show you what's going on with the car and what they're like. Uh, if you're curious on how much they cost me, it was a lot. You're looking at about 900 US dollars, I think. Delivery wasn't too bad given the overall cost of the parts, but it was still pretty pricey. Um, don't tell the missus. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Next time you'll see me, hopefully we'll be working on putting that Kraken in the car and one of you can take home my old Kraken for free. You gotta subscribe to find out how that happens and how you can get it though. So, thanks for watching. See you next time. Ta.